As part of our ongoing culture and lifestyle series, we bring you into the world of an oyster. Pack TV Community News was invited inside Duxbury's Island Creek Oyster Company to learn more about this shellfish, a tasty addition to our cuisine. Island Creek was founded by our boss, Skip Bennett, who uh, was granted the first lease in Duxbury Bay in, I think, 1992. He first started growing hard shell clams, quahogs. That actually wound up not working out uh, because of a disease that killed the uh, clams. So he switched species to oysters uh, a couple of years after that, I think in the mid-90s. It worked, basically, <laughs> and uh, it worked really well. And, and then he started growing a lot of them. And then his problem was that he had to figure out a way to get rid of them, to sell them. He basically went pounding on chef's doors, uh, mostly in Boston, but on the South Shore here, too. And they sort of caught fire. And, uh, and the sh chefs turned out to really love them. And um, so now we have a, a national business. We FedEx oysters overnight all over the country. Uh, we sell to pretty high profile restaurants in New York and in Boston. Uh, so this is our algae lab. And um, oysters eat algae. Um, and they use that to um, grow their shell and also to grow gonad to reproduce. The more algae that they eat, the better the chance they have that they will ripen up and start to spawn. So what we do in here is grow the algae that they need to basically ripen up so that we can trick them essentially into thinking that it's the middle of the summertime even though it's February right now. After they spawn, uh, their larvae will go up into these tanks behind me and then we have, to, um, we have to basically sort out the sizes over the course of another three to four weeks until they get to be big enough to put into uh, the ocean in order for us to be able to keep track of them. Uh, because when they're in these tanks, they're literally uh, microscopic. So they're you know, only microns big. So um, it's just, uh, there's a period there where we're really um, taking care of them and have a very watchful eye over them. I grow algae for baby oysters to eat and also algae for our adult male and female broodstock. Broodstock is basically our studs, so they're the best producers, really great shell shape, what we look for as a company to sell to our clients. I will check the broodstock just to make sure that they haven't spawned on their own, which is basically reproducing on their own because we want to control it as much as we can. I'll feed them, clean them get them nice new homes again, and fill it back with water, and then I will usually spend the rest of my day in the algae room. So I grow mono organisms to feed oyster larvae and also the brood stock. I enjoy the husbandry side of it, so actually coming in and caring for the animals, but the scientific side is a big plus too, being able to work in a lab and under a microscope and kind of getting my nerdy side out. <laughs> what these go through, the, they start in our hatchery, under a microscope. After about three months, they're roughly the size of a grain of sand. Six months, they're anywhere from a quarter inch to an inch and a half. And then at the end of 18 months, this is, this is what you have here. So it's, it's kind of an amazing process, you know, in that Cliff Notes version. What we look for in this final check is, you know, very nice deep cup. This would be the top of the oyster and that's the bottom. So there's, there's two shells. And we have a flat top, a deep cup, and it makes it very easy to shuck and present on ice and easy to work with. The winter is more of our, we're basically in a harvest mode. Come spring, in about a month or two, six weeks or so, we start to do double time with growing our next crop. So we're always harvesting, continuing this process. Once we get to that point, you spin it, you zip it, tag it, and then it's done. And it's out of our hands at that point.